Today's video is a follow-up, an update on my first video about rebuilding my entire Obsidian structure. So if you haven't watched that one, you might feel a little lost today. Okay, with that out of the way, let's take a look at my progress. As you already know, my goal is to prepare Obsidian for my timeline system. So let's open this folder here. This is where everything will be, almost everything will be in the future. For now, what I have here is most of the blog posts and a lot of my journal entries. The, se the second one, the journal, this move is taking a, a longer time than I was expecting because I'm also organizing the photos and the files, adding dates to both of them, like I mentioned in the first video. And by the way, if you haven't, please watch this other video about how I am changing the creation date dates of some of this file. So this is, like I said, will take a long time. Not years like I was expecting before, but a long time. So here is my old journal uh, folder, and I'm gradually moving everything to the timeline. So the cool part about the timeline, now that I have blog posts and my journal here, is that it creates a more accurate representation of my life, of the time passing. And the more information I add to this timeline, the more it will be a better representation of my real life. Okay, now that I have the timeline here, it is super easy to right click here and create a new node. And if you watch the other video, you already noticed some changes here. First, I went back to having a single template for everything. I also added this value uh, property here. It can be anything. Uh, I'm using it for anything that is a number. So in, in a blog post, it might not be used, but in other situations, it might be useful. And the type. So I'm adding the type manually. Why? Well, because there will be many types of nodes. And if everything is inside the templates, that automatic trigger will not work. I'll have to do it manually because I'll create all the nodes from here, most of the nodes from here. And it's okay. It's just a matter of selecting the type, blog or journal or whatever it is. And this is important, like you know, to filter information. However, I created some saved filters. So let's go to my bookmarks here to look at those filters. I haven't created filters for the blog and journal yet, but here's a good example. These are all filters that look for notes that have, for example, my wife name, my dog name, my son, and so on. But if I click here, these are all the posts that have my wife's name here inside the people field, the property. So let me show you how to create this filter, but I'll do it on my other account because I don't want to mess up with what I, what, I, what I did here. It looks like it is the same, but this is a different account. So let's say I want to filter all the notes that have my name on the people property. So all I have to do is, like I showed you before, use the bracket here, people, add my name, close the bracket, enter. So this is the only note that has my name, but I can also click here and bookmark this. And I can create, for example, a different name for this. It can be just Vlad or Vladimir Camp, whatever it is, but I can create a different name. And I can even add it to a folder, but there's no folder. So let's do this here. So I can, from here, create a folder, let's say family, and drag this here. And now every time I need to find all the notes. All that is to do is click here and it will filter all the notes that have my name as a property. And like I showed you in the other video, you can 
create many combinations here, add tags, uh, select notes with one or another person. There, there's a lot that you can do. And then just come here, click here, and save it as a bookmark and have this uh, available to use when you need it. So what I'm doing is adding the names, the family names to all the notes. And then when I need to filter, it's just a matter of going to my bookmarks and clicking the name of the person. And I may create others in the future, blog, trips, and things like that. Okay, back to my real account. Let's take a quick look at my home page here, my home note, at least the parts that I can show you. So what I did here, I added more uh, shortcuts using that tag trick. If you haven't, go watch the other video to understand what, what is going on here. But as you can see, I, I added here veterinary, I added here whip, which is work in progress. So some of the notes that I'm still working on have this. Uh, and I can show you this one. Let's click here. This is a draft of ideas I had to write a post about what I'm showing you today. I ended up not writing that post because I thought it would be much better to show you. So we have already talked about templates. We are talking about bookmarks, the blog plus journal uh, uh, timeline. Uh, we didn't actually talk about templates. I'll get back to this one. Timeline uh, and the new maker. So let's talk about templates before I, I go to the maker dashboard. So what I did here, uh, I'm now with, like I told you, one template for the notes. And I also removed the A from, from the, the beginning of this. So these are all insertions. I, I, I insert this in the post. So this is the super note link. This is the Evernote link. And this is the a voice note link. They are all affiliate links. So when I'm writing a post and when it's time to insert uh, one of these blocks, all I do is uh, use the common T keyboard shortcut and select one of them and insert them in the post. Okay, let's take a look at the maker dashboard. I published a blog post about this one, but the main change here are the icons. And this is such a, a, a small change, but it, it improved significantly how I'm finding information here. So the idea is I click here and let's say I want to find information about, I don't know, about how to create, how to create a cable so I can just by looking at the image, understand that this is what I'm looking for. And the same is true for uh, OBS because there is the huge OBS icon here and everything else works like that. For example, I have sync thing here. I have the markdown uh, uh, logo here. So I have this information. These icons are helping a lot, but remember, I told you I like to repurpose information. So this is my main computer and this here is the logos folder we just uh, saw uh, a moment ago uh, in Obsidian. These are the, the icons that I can drag to the app I use to create the thumbnails. Then let me talk about the other folders here. From here, Obsidian, all the way down here, this are all uh, shared uh, folders. So Obsidian are my vaults. Then I have documents. These are my documents folder in Obsidian. So I can drag any of the files to an email, for example. This is that photos folder that uh, it's in Obsidian. This is my uh, a post from yesterday. And the files folder also in Obsidian. This, these are all Obsidian uh, folders. The logos started from here. Then I have video production. This is, for example, let's say all the sounds I use on my videos. This is also uh, an Obsidian folder that's synchronized with all my computers and I can use and I can simply drag a, a, full, a file from here to my uh, editing software. Then we have Date Creator. This is not synchronized with anything. This is just to uh, change the, uh, a test I was doing. Watch that other video about changing the creation date. This is the Supernote folder, but this is from uh, Google Drive. These are my Supernote uh, uh, folders. And if we go to export, here we have the Evernote folder. There is also a video here on the channel. This is the one that sends information to, sends the notes to Evernote. 
than Android Photos. This is simply uh, all the pictures that I take on Android are sent to my Mac. There is a video here on the channel about this. Not a good name, but I started with this name and now it's here forever, I guess. It's more of a synchronization. Everything I put here, I can send to my Android and vice versa. So this is for the screen captures and anything that I do on the phone to be able to easily uh, use them here on my Mac. And this is also a sync thing folder. Then there's a screen recording. This is a, a iCloud folder and everything that I record, including this screen that you are seeing now is saved in this folder in all the computers. So they use the same folder and they are all synchronized. So it doesn't matter where I create that recording, I'll be able to access it from all my computers. I know that people love many other features on Obsidian, but this is the one I love the most, being able to use the same files anywhere and have them synchronized. Not all the folders there are Obsidian folders, but I, I think you got the point. <laughs> the arrows are more the creation than, I don't know, I, I'm just trying to make this look cool. I don't really think it's useful. It's cool. <laughs> and talking about cool, let me show you the map because I'm really proud of it. It's getting better and better. There, there's a lot missing here, but as you can see, this is such a cool effect. And again, these are only notes that have some meaning, some journal note, a post, something that, uh, or a trip information. And let's go to the trips. Uh, the trips folder will merge with the timeline in the future, but I, I have to figure out some things here. And again, there's a lot of trips missing here. But let's go to this old one here. So what I have inside is another folder with the reversed date and that folder has all the information about that trip and also uh, an itinerary. So the first one here is the itinerary and this one is the one with the link to the map. I'm not going to open because there is a lot of personal information inside this notes. I'm already showing you too much. <laughs> As you can see, most of the, the file there, they, they also have the, the reversed date. So the idea is to drag everything to the timeline, but I'm, I'm I have to figure out what to do with the images because again, Obsidian doesn't, doesn't play well with finding images. Uh, there's no way to tag an image, not finding, it finds it by the title, using the title, but there's no way to, to add a tag or any other uh, information that will help me find that image in the future if I need to. If everything is connected to the node, it's okay, but I'm still, I, I, I wanna still, I wanna go step by step. You know that I do things like that very slowly. So in the future, probably all this will disappear, all dismembrated parts will go to the timeline, other parts to the files folder, other parts to the photos folder. Yeah, this is pretty cool, but it's going away. <laughs> I guess it's going away, but we'll still have the map and other ways to find and go to that information. If this one was helpful, I'd appreciate it. Thumbs up, and if you wanna help, even more, please consider uh, becoming a supporter on Patreon or YouTube. Thanks so much for your time. See you soon.